Hello, and welcome back to Art Together Online with Liz from the Worcester Art Museum. Today's lesson is creative collages. We'll be looking at some work from the Worcester Art Museum, reading the book, The Itsy Bitsy Spider by Rebecca and Ed Emberley, and then we'll be doing our own collage projects. So let's get going. We'll jump right in to reading our book together. The Itsy Bitsy Spider by Rebecca Emberley and Ed Emberley. The Itsy Bitsy Spider went up the water spout, down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain and the itsy bitsy spider went up the spout again. Now, this is also a song, and it's sort of a short book, so I'm going to sing it to you while we look at the pictures again. Are we ready? All right. I have to turn the pages fast. That's why I read it the first time, so you can see the pictures a little bit better. The Itsy Bitsy Spider by Rebecca Emberly and Ed Emberly. The Itsy Bitsy Spider went up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the itsy bitsy spider went up the spout again. Now, I bet a lot of you already knew that song. And I bet you even know hand dances and all sorts of things like this, the itsy bitsy spider. What I wanted to do is just take another minute, minute and look at the art in this book. Let's go back to the beginning here. Here is our itsy bitsy spider. Now, if it was that big, it would not be itsy bitsy and I would be a little bit afraid. Luckily, it's just a piece of art that's in a book. But we're going to be looking at the actual image, how this image was created. The artists used collage. And collage is when you take things such as paper, fabric, or any other sort of flat or mostly flat object and put them together, usually with glue or something else, to create a piece of art. So you can see here that this spider has a large body and then a head and then all of these legs, and then on top of the legs are all of these different spots. Now, the edge here around the spider is smooth. And the same here with the head, the edge is smooth and with the dots. But you can notice that the edge around the legs is not smooth. So scissors or another cutting implement was used for the body, the head, and all of these circles. But then somebody was tearing paper to get this sort of rough edge. And we can see the same thing throughout the whole book. Here we have clean edges that were cut. And we have some of the torn edges. And then again, so this is actually patterned paper that was cut. And you can see that the artist also used a colored background to give the blue the sky it's blue and then this part was torn and that looks like a cloud so collage can be used for many things to tell stories this is sort of a somewhat realistic type of artwork when we look at it we can tell that this is a spider and this is supposed to be the sun and that these are raindrops but Collages do not have to be realistic. Um, so this is an example of a collage piece that I did um, as a 
with another project, but it's, it's abstract. It's a little bit less realistic. It's more about patterns and colors. And this one's made out of paper. And then this is actually a fabric collage. Again, abstract. So I used um, sort of just scrap fabric, including part of a, a pocket here, um, and created this piece. So the two projects that we have today will be collages. But before we get into those, we're going to just pop into the museum galleries from home and look at some artwork there. All right. Let's go in. Welcome in to the Worcester Art Museum galleries from home. We're going to be looking at three pieces from Wham's collection, and they're all going to be collage, but they're going to be slightly different from each other. The first piece that we're going to be looking at is Manier, and this is by Carla Golembe. Now this piece shows a person's head in profile from the side and it has a very bright background. You can see that those bright sort of navy blue and magenta colors behind the black um, paper that was used for the portrait profile are super bright and they make that profile pop. So part of doing collage is picking out your papers to make sure that they'll make a great statement um, and that they'll be easy to see if that's what you want to go for. If you want to do a camouflaged collage, that's completely different. But in this case, the artist did want you to be able to easily see the profile of the person. So you can see that at the back, they have the largest pieces. And then as you get sort of closer and closer to the viewer or the top of the piece of art, the pieces get a little bit smaller, more like details. So you can see that on top of the profile here, there are some eye details and some more decorative details. So this is a more realistic collage, although it is simple. It doesn't go into a lot of detail um, and it is made primarily with just cut paper. We're going to be looking at another collage that's a bit more mixed media and includes some pastel on top of the paper. Here we go. All right, this piece is untitled, but then in parentheses it says Deity. This is by the artist K.J. Ramanujam, and this is an Indian artist from India. And even though it's untitled, it does sort of mention a deity. This piece is a little bit more abstract. So unlike the last collage that we looked at, which was fairly obviously a person's face, it's a bit harder to tell what's going on here. But I happen to know that some of the Indian deities have animal heads, like Ganesha, who I'll put right here just for a minute. This is a sculpture called Seated Ganesha in the collection of the Worcester Art Museum. So you can see that Ganesha has an elephant head. Now, if I were to look again at this collage piece, I can sort of see an elephant head type shape. That might have been intentional in what the artist meant to do, or it might be something that I'm seeing as the artwork viewer. That's one of the fun things about art. The artist gets to create a piece of art that to them means one thing, but sometimes the viewer looking at it sees something completely different. So when I look at this piece, it reminds me of the Indian deity Ganesha. All right, and you can see that there's a little bit more pastel and maybe some shading, and this piece is much more complex, a lot more pieces. We're going to go to our last piece. Now, this last piece, you'll see, you know, sort of the same size as the other ones, but it's really large. It's about four by five feet large, so it wouldn't fit through a doorway if you were holding it up. And it'd be probably just about as tall as I am if I were standing up right now. This piece is called Bridal Spell, and it's by the artist Jess. Now, this piece 
is a little bit different. The last pieces that we looked at use sort of plain colored paper to create their collage. For this, the artist chose to use other images and incorporate them together to create a new art piece. And most of the images that they used here are actually sort of little cuts or snippets of other pieces of art. So you might even recognize some of them. And the artist used all of these images to create sort of a fantasy pretend landscape where all of these people were together. So we went from very simple, very bold cut profile to a more complex collage that included a little bit of pastel to a very complex piece that used other images in its creation. We're going to be doing two types of projects today. So let's go over to that part. We're going to be starting with our own collaged creature. So for this one, I used some plain construction paper. I had some patterned paper that I wanted to use as well. So you can see that some of this has patterns. And then um, I just put it all together. At the very end, I did add a little bit of marker because I wanted a little bit more detail. But you'll see in the process, what I did first is I came up with an idea and I did a little sketch of what I thought I would want it to look like. And then I worked with the background, sort of figured out what I wanted the background to look like. Um, and I did the figure. So I cut out these large pieces, so the yellow pieces and the green piece first because I needed to know how big they were going to be before I did any of the smaller pieces. And then I put, cut all the smaller pieces out. And as I was cutting things out, I put them to the side. So you might want to keep all your small pieces together, all your large pieces together, all your medium pieces together. It's easy to lose some of the little pieces. Then, once I had all my pieces cut out, I took them and sort of test fit them together like a puzzle. And sometimes I made some changes because the tail was a little bit too long or um, you know, the, the nose was a little bit different. So I changed a few things and then I glued it all together. So let's cut away and you can see the process of me working on my creature collage. enjoyed watching me make this mer kitten and what we'll do is we'll put this one down and I'll bring up my other collage. So this is a collage that is more inspired by the last piece from the collection that we looked at, The Bridal Spell by the artist Jess. Um, and it's sort of a fantasy landscape. So you can see here that I've used some actually different papers. So it's not just as plain papers as in here. I wanted to kick it up a little bit. So I have a watercolor painting type thing that I did a while ago that I didn't really finish or want to do much with, so it became the background for this piece. I had a bunch of pictures of water from a magazine that I cut up to put together like waves. And then I had another painting that had this sort of yellow sandy color and orange color that I used for the the earth, the, the soil. And then to cutting out of magazines, I found uh, this building. I found uh, this woman riding a bicycle, a tiny little man pointing at something, and a woman looking up. And then I also found a humpback whale, which was originally this way because it was sort of breaching coming out of the water. But I thought, wow, do you know what? That would make an awesome rocket whale. So I have this humpback whale with like a rocket background. And then I put a bus up there just because this is sort of fun, fantastical, 
um, pretend. And so that's what this guy is looking at. She's looking the other way, so she doesn't know what's going on. You'll see that I did the same process as I did for the mer kitten piece here, where I started working with like the larger pieces and I cut up all of the water and the land and cut everything out and I placed it together first without gluing it just so I could figure out where I wanted things. And then once I figured all of that out, I started gluing it together. Now at the very end, I took a little bit of inspiration from the Untitled Deity piece, uh, and I included a bit of mixed media. So with the watercolor paper already having some crayon on it, I decided I would use some more color, so this is actually oil pastel, to make things pop a little bit more and make them blend. Um, I did the same with this sort of fire area. And then because some of my cutouts, like this woman, were a little bit hard to see, uh, I decided I would outline all of the magazine cutouts that were like people or objects in black markers so that would pop. So let's cut away and we can watch this process. the process of watching this fantasy landscape. Okay, let's recap. So today we did creative collages. We read The Itsy Bitsy Spider by Rebecca Emberley and Ed Emberley. We looked at three different pieces from the Worcester Art Museum collection that were all collages. And then we took a look at how we can create our own collage piece, such as this creature collage, or the fantasy landscape collage. I hope you had fun. I hope you make some great collages and have so much fun doing it. And if you'd like to share it with us, you can always post on Instagram or Facebook and use the tag Wham Art Together. All right, until next time, stay creative.